Nelson Mandela, revolutionary figure, has just passed. It's quite a tragedy. Now, here's the thing. He, Nelson Mandela was a divisive figure in certain ways. He was a revolutionary fighting against an established power. And as anybody who is a student of history can tell you, no matter how evil the power you are opposing is, if it is the authority in power, people will say you are wrong for opposing it. Now, apartheid, if anybody, you know, doesn't know what system he opposed and what he was up against, you really should look into it. But the short story is, it was a form of institutionalized segregation and discrimination against the native African people. In other words, you know, the black people there, <laughs> where a minority white power pretty much kept them as second-class citizens and controlled them. He was against this, and he suffered greatly for it. Now, why do I bring all of this up? I mean, obviously he died, and people know about this stuff, and it should be remembered what he did. But the thing I believe is that is being left out, and that also should be remembered, is how many people supported the apartheid government against Mandela. Maybe they didn't actually support apartheid. Quite a few of them were like, yes, I think this is wrong. But they would call people like Nelson Mandela a terrorist for standing against this incorrect, wrong, and pretty much evil regime. They said that it needed to be fought differently, that rather than using, you know, insurrection more or less, even if his was peaceful, pretty much as a side note, he was a peaceful activist. Early in his career, he sort of went with some violent actions, yes, but he disowned these things. He went against them and he turned to peaceful activism, passive protest. Yet, people called him a terrorist, including in America. Dick Cheney was one of them. He was one of the people that said he was a terrorist, that instead of standing against this government directly, we needed to use economic pressures against them. We needed to slowly fight them over time, you know, that, in fact, there were quite a few who said we shouldn't even, you know, use sanctions. We should actually encourage capitalism in there because, obviously, capitalism, you know, people won't shop from the places that are racist. They'll just buy other stuff and shop in other places, and the racist will, racism will go away. No. See, what happens is, if you have this principle applied in a place more like America, in a non-racist area, it'll work. A business opens and says no blacks allowed, in a place where people are open-minded and accepting, they will go out of business most likely because people will be repulsed. Not in this situation, where it was institutionalized, enshrined in the culture, where this form of racism was not only acceptable, but preferred where this minority white power supported itself even at cost. Oh, well, we could shop at this more friendly store, and it's cheaper, but this other store does not allow blacks in, and I support that. Thus, I'm going to shop there to make a statement and continue the cycle that benefits me. And very quickly, we find flaws in the arguments of these people that called Nelson Mandela and his followers terrorists and said that we needed to fight it a different way. And if you ask me, it pretty much was apathy. They, they didn't really care about the apartheid movement and the fact that these people suffered because it didn't affect them. It was easier to simply say that, well, if we just simply do what we're doing, it'll eventually work. Because, well, that's easy, isn't it? If we do what we're already doing and make no changes, eventually things will go away. Well, duh, time happens. <laughs> Ages pass. But that doesn't mean you did a fucking thing to actually contribute to this. Sitting on your ass, doing what you always did, and it, the problem eventually goes away? That is not called contributing to the solution. That's called being a lazy ass. And in fact, that is actually contributing to the problem because you are continuing its existence by doing nothing. And so, when we mourn Nelson Mandela, when we see uh, that a great person has died, I think not only should we remember his accomplishments, but we should remember the fact that people like this are opposed by not only evil people who want to stay in power, but by the indifference of others. And that 
people willing to justify doing nothing for whatever reason is just as much a part of the problem as those who sustain it directly. Because if you see an injustice occur and you refuse to stand against it, well, in a sense, you've become a party to it. If you see someone being racist to somebody and you say nothing or do nothing at all, you've become a silent partner in this. And if you do the worst thing, which is, oh, this person stands against what's going on, they're bad for it, then yes, you are actually a part of the problem. You've taken that extra step from passive support to active support. Calling out the people who stand against injustice because you don't always like their methods. I mean, you hit a slippery slope, yes. If somebody's methods are bombing clinics or whatever, or we're going to burn people alive or whatever, some horrible method, then yes, they're just as wrong as the evil they oppose. But if their methods are a passive resistance, and you call them a terrorist and an anarchist simply because they oppose an establishment, well then yes, you've taken up a plate for the enemy. And, quite frankly, I think this goes on today still far too much where we see injustice in the world and we simply sit there and say it'll work itself out with time. Well, maybe it will. But does that actually excuse any of us from the fact that, well, if we had actually tried to make a difference, maybe the injustice would have been resolved faster? I don't think so. Just something to think about. Nelson Mandela, a reg... <laughs> I was almost going to say regulatory figure. <laughs> okay. Yes, a regulatory figure. Um, okay. 